Hi folks and welcome to Saving Miller. Today I will show you how to install a new dishwasher. So I got my wife a new dishwasher for Christmas and I'm finally getting around to installing it. So if you're in this situation I thought it'd be helpful for me to share my experience and we'll see what happens here. So what we're going to do is take the old dishwasher out. I'll show you what it looks like so you get an idea of what your existing dishwasher may be. And then I'll show you how to install the new one. Now for tools for the removal, there are screws that hold this thing in place. In this case, they're Phillips screws. So you need a some type of screwdriver with a Phillips bit. You're also going to need, there's a hose clamp on the drain line. So you'll need a nut driver or a flathead screwdriver. Try to go with a nut driver. Usually these are 5 16 And then for the water lines, you're going to need a wrench, a, uh, an adjustable wrench. And I always keep this close by. And it helps to have a mustache. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is open this thing up. This thing was not fastened correctly. It was not installed properly. There should be a couple of screws up here. In this case, there aren't any. So this thing, it's a horrible old thing but it kind of falls out on its own. However, there are screws on the side here. So you may have both. You should have the ones up here. Those are the most important, but we do have the ones on the side. So we'll take those out. So this is all that is holding the dishwasher in place. Like I said, that's not how it should be installed. So we're gonna take a new one first. These are just little seals on the side. And I already know this panel right here needs to be secured properly. Okay, now we'll close it up. Get this stuff out of the way. And now we're gonna go under the sink. So I'll show you what that looks like. Okay. Typically, a dishwasher is going to have three connections. So let's get in there. The first connection we can see here is the drain line. Usually these do come into a garbage disposal like this. So here's the clamp. We'll have to take that off. And I do have a bucket close by, so we're gonna make sure that drain line is empty. We'll take it off of there. And in the back, this is going to vary quite a bit, but in this case, there's actually an outlet and a plug there. So we'll unplug that to kill the power to the dishwasher. Yours may be direct wired or something like that. And then we have the hot water line here. And we know which one it is, um, which one has the dishwasher on it because we have the line that goes to the sink and we have the line for the dishwasher. So we'll close this valve. And before you start on the project, check that valve and make sure it works because you don't want to get halfway into this and find out that your valve is stuck and you can't get it off. So now we'll take our wrench and take this off. Okay, our valve is closed. Now we're gonna open this up. And I've got a bucket ready here. Put that underneath so that when the water comes out, as it likely will, we can catch it without getting the cabinet all wet. Okay, we had a few drips there, but very little. Now we'll get the drain line off. The 5 16 inch nut driver that I mentioned. Just loosen that. Once again, we're going to be careful with this. Put the bucket underneath, just in case there's stuff in there. If there is drain water in there, it's going to be the nasty stuff. So definitely pay attention to that. And just in case, this is a useful hose clamp, so you should save that in case you need it in the future for something. And we unplug it. Now a lot of people think it's just convenience, but the real reason that the dishwasher is located right beside the sink, typically, is because all these lines have to connect to, to the, the water and the drain lines under the sink. So it's almost always installed right beside it. So in this case, they cut a hole in the back of the cabinet and ran the lines through there. So now we can feed these lines out as we pull the dishwasher out. Okay, so let's see if we can get this out. It might make sense to take this door off. 
I'm not going to yet, but we'll see how it goes. So we got those screws off. So we just pull this thing out, checking on the lines over there to make sure that they're not getting pinched or caught. And it slides out. There's this nasty blanket on it. This thing was disgusting. Okay, we got it out. So the next thing that I'm going to do is clean up the space and get this panel secured. And I'm going to check to make sure I still have 24 inches between the cabinet and the panel right there. That's what you're going to need. So this doesn't really apply in all situations, but that's the next step for me. Okay, now that I've got my space prepared, the panel is secured at the right dimensions, 24 inches. It's a standard size. Um, I've got the new dishwasher here, got the old one out of the way. So now I'm ready to begin installing. If you have one of these, it'll slow you down a little bit, but hey, they should be involved too, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, next step. Contrary to conventional wisdom, read the freaking directions. So let's check it out. <clears throat> When you open the door to a dishwasher that's not secured, be careful if you open it. Um, it could actually tip forward. So we'll exercise some care here and we will investigate what's inside. They always pack it full of stuff and tape it and this and that. You get rid of the garbage. <clears throat> Bunch of shipping stuff, stickers, this and that. Now, this is not a review. I don't intend to review uh, or make a review on a new dishwasher that I haven't used, but this is a Samsung dishwasher, uh, model DW whatever, and uh, really we bought it because it was a nice color. So I know nothing about how well it functions. We're just talking about the installation. <clears throat> okay, finally, we find the hidden directions. Installation guide, imagine that. Let's see what's there. We're gonna close it once again so it doesn't flop over. That'd be bad to scratch this up right now. Okay, so I found the installation instructions. I found this goofy little heat moisture shield thing. It's supposed to go on here. I'll probably install it, but I won't, it'll be hard to show. So that's what that's for. Uh, kick plate, some installation brackets, and the installation guide. Let's see. Hmm. These installation instructions are intended for use by qualified installers. Well, that's out. So we're going to have to do this ourselves then, since we're not qualified. So... Um, this did not come with a power cord. I don't know if other dishwashers are like this or not, but a Samsung, you're gonna have to have a cord or a some kind of wire to wire it to the junction box. So we got this. We're gonna need three wire nuts. And we need a strain relief. So let's get closer. We'll wire this up. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, the way this one is set up, the junction box is here on the front, and then the wire is supposed to be routed back through here. So we'll get our wire out. We've got three wires, and this is pretty much universal for any appliance. Now, a lot of people are scared of electricity, and, you know, they get all freaked out about it. It's really quite simple. Um, this is not something that is difficult to do at all, and... In this case, it's quite easy. So the green wire goes to the green wire and the white goes to the white. I mean, it's that simple. So what we're gonna do first is install the strain relief and we need to orient this so that we can put the wire in there. So open it up, slide it on there, slide the wire in. And then we need to put the strain relief nut. Well, that's great. Well, I guess don't do that. Thankfully, I have another one, so I'm gonna go get it. Okay, this time, let's not drop it inside the dishwasher. We'll come through there, this rubber flappy thing. 
really annoying. Put it on the wires. Slide that strain relief in. We want to turn it so that the screw, the tightening screws are accessible. So we're turning those up towards us. And then just tighten that ring on there. And then we're going to leave just enough wire in here to um, let us get the wire nuts on. And we'll tighten these down with a power tool because that's better. And I call this a strain relief. It really is um, meant to secure the cord to the, the box so it doesn't pull out. And we can start with the wires. Get those lined up. It's good practice to pre-twist, but honestly you don't have to. And once again, don't be intimidated by electricity, especially not something simple like this. You know, you would pay an electrician quite a lot to come out and do this for you. And then he wouldn't even install the dishwasher. All he would do is wire this up. Um, not a bad gig if you ask me, but you can do this yourself. Okay, so we've got that done. Let me just quickly show you what we have here. So these are just tucked in there, wired on there. You want it, these? You want these to be pretty secure. I mean, give them a good twist, and then they're just tucked in there, just like that. Like I mentioned, strain relief here. Here's the locking nut. You probably couldn't see that, and the way that I tightened it is simply by pushing on those little nubs and then at this point you could actually turn it if you if you want to but, but that's good okay time for the cover so this is a this is a pre-made cord and I bought this at my Ace Hardware you can get them at most hardware stores works quite nicely and I got one that's eight feet long so that it's long enough to reach Okay, so the cover plate is on. This unit has little clips here to secure the wire to keep it tucked up underneath there. And at this point, it's a good idea to take a look at the, the leveling legs. So, and both how they work and where they are. So once we get this installed, we'll be able to adjust these. And this one has a little Allen screw here. And <clears throat> we can adjust the one in the back using an Allen wrench. This one is a 9 64ths. Now at this point you've probably been annoyed. You've made four trips to the hardware store to make sure you get all the electrical parts. So I would highly recommend a support beverage. The next thing we're going to do is hook up the water supply. So we're going to have to set this back on its feet. Okay so this dishwasher did not come with a water supply line so I had to go pick one up. And this one comes with a little elbow adapter and it is specifically labeled dishwasher connector. Um, so in this case, it's going to go from the dishwasher here back into the cabinet where we took it off previously. So there we go. Nice little brass adapter. That should work quite nicely. Okay, so I got one <clears throat> that is... Uh, six feet long you really want to make sure you have plenty because we're gonna to have to hook this up and then stick it through the cabinet and then slide this in so if you have one that's too short it just makes the installation very difficult <clears throat> so we're gonna start with this one take your wrench just make sure that's good and snug Give you a closer look at this. Make sure 
that that washer is in there. If that's not in there, you're going to have big problems. <clears throat> Okay, in this case, there was a little cap on here. And so I removed the cap. This is just a garden hose fitting. Just screw it right on there. And make sure that you aim this the way it's going to be. So this one is going to go this way. If your opening is on this side, you would, of course, turn it this way. So you don't have, you don't want that thing kinked around like this. <clears throat> And these types of fittings are intended to be hand tightened. So you actually don't want to over tighten it. Okay, so remember when we started, we had three items underneath the sink that we had to deal with. Water supply line, power cord, and the drain line. Now, we're gonna feed those through there and get this thing into its spot. Now this one has nice plastic feet down there so it won't scratch up the floor. Depending on your floor, you might need several people to do this. <clears throat> so we're just gonna carefully slide this thing back here. And we're gonna feed them through the cabinet, the, the three lines. Bring it around. back on this side now and pull them we want the excess to be in here for now now we can slide it on back okay so at this point remember we found these things so we're actually gonna put those in place so that they're there before we slide it in the rest of the way. Now there's four screws with this. And I really like these. I'm quite impressed with the way they put these together. So there's a little notch there. And this actually hooks on there. There's a little spot for it. These, these are pretty good. I've seen others that have been terrible. So I like these. Quite impressive. Now we can just slide it on back in. Now at this point, we have to go around and make sure that our, that our uh, utility lines in the back are in the correct position. We don't want those pinched. And now we can go on back okay so depending on your kitchen um, the reveal and everything here is going to vary a little bit I'm going to raise the feet so the whole unit comes up and I've got to raise the one side a little bit more than the other so we're in the space correctly there are little seals here and it's great if you can get those up against the wood that's just going to make everything work better in the long run so we're going to level this thing before we secure the screws up on top. Now I've gotten the front to where I want it this way. Now I have to adjust the back so this thing is secure. You can see it rocks like that. So I'll have to adjust the, the one in the back that I showed you earlier. Now I've got this thing leveled in the space just like I want it. I will say that my cabinets are old and pretty horrible. So the way that this is set up is actually not ideal. I would like to be like it to fit a little bit better and I'd like to have it, you know, adjusted, but this is what I have to deal with. But since I've got everything in place now, I'm ready to go ahead and fasten these things, which will secure the, the dishwasher from tipping out and it'll hold it in place. Okay, got it in place. So I'm going to screw these little brackets to the bottom here. 
And of course, check your screw links. You don't want to come through the countertop. Make sure you have the appropriate screws. Okay, great. Our dishwasher is secured. Now, let's go in under the cabinet and hook up the utilities. Okay, we're back on the floor. This is the last part of the installation. I always like to let the toe kick until last, um, just in case I gotta pull it in, you know, to make adjustments or anything like that. So now the toe kick is ready to go on, and then we'll be finished. Okay, there you have it. We've got it installed. Secured. There it is. Now I just need to put the rack back inside and maybe we'll find the installation directions and see how we start it up. Well, there you have it an installed dishwasher. I think it took me maybe about an hour and a half of actual time. I did have to run to, to get the water supply line, um, but it's really not that difficult. So go for it. You can do it too. It's not that, not that hard. Hopefully I've provided enough information that's useful, some good tips, some good advice there, and uh, grow yourself a mustache and install your dishwasher. Good luck. Saving Miller out.